Welcome to the endgame of gathering and crafting, and this episode of Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. Where now that we're not so blinded by the light, we can see the world's bounty all the more clearly. Last time we stopped two calamities in their tracks. The first is saved, and we have a whole world to relatively safely explore and gather at leisure. We can spend a good bit of time with the final push to the current level cap and get into a deeper discussion of end game progression for gatherers and crafters. You'll need this if you'll be around for the entire curve of Endwalker. Let's get showing everything off then. So as I went over in the last episode of Gathering and Crafting, even if you're using the Firmament, you'll likely want to spend scripts buying yourself a full set of level 70 script gear. It's relatively cheap, and weekly custom deliveries are worth a ton of scripts. And if you at all want to interact with specifically the Shadowbringers features, and not just push to 80 in the firmament, you will need gear. And a full set of script gear should be plenty enough. Just... Be ready for the same wall as always when trying to hit level 71 with normally crafting stuff. Now while we already have saved the world, we're not done with the story for everything we can use for gathering and crafting. We need to complete almost the entirety of patch 5.1 to get a custom delivery NPC. The quest in specific is moving forward the second to last quest of the patch. With that done, we can finally start going through the unlocks. We're already in Yomor thanks to the story, so talk to Moen, who is totally not this world's Rowena, to unlock our new Splendors vendor location. Turn-ins and shops are right here, but also this is the secondary requirement for that custom delivery NPC I mentioned. So let's go through all of those for Shadowbringers. Back over at Kaishir, he now has a new quest for us. We'll be helping the Beehive turn their tables into profits. And as long as we have the basic script gear I suggested, nothing fancy, these turn-ins should be super easy to get done. Here I'm even showing a full craft of it being done. And this is a level 70 culinarian, so no level wall to get in the way either. Now onto the other two custom delivery NPCs, we have a bit of a lengthy detour first. Back in the firmament, after it was completed, a party began. This party will last all the way until Endwalker. What happens when Endwalker comes? Who knows? But for now, it's a set of special minigames that give tickets with rewards inside. They're actually pretty great. Each minigame involves interacting with stuff, but in different ways. Get gold rank and you will get two fate presents. These are loot boxes basically with random rewards. Within a pool, of course. Mostly inside will be fate tokens, but you can turn these tickets in at a vendor in the front of the firmament. So as long as you do a lot of fates, you can get all the rewards you want. But back in the Heaven's Word episode, I told you to do all the quests in the firmament that there is. This section is to why. There's a bunch of quest lines that lead to more custom deliveries. The first chain of quests ends at to thaw a frozen heart, which then will split into two more chains. If songs had wings is the path to our first new delivery. After O oh Crafter My Crafter, we unlock a hill tool, I assume that's how you pronounce it, and a new Splendors vendor down the steps. This is where we buy the craft items we need for a hill as well. Now near a hill is the making of a market, the final chain to worry about. This one is fairly lengthy and takes us all over until the final quest smiles cross the sky. After completion of this is one final quest, the third custom delivery unlock. The Count de Durandere needs our help to be a nurse and we shall be paid greatly. Right outside is yet another script vendor, and the vendor for the items we need for this custom delivery line. Moving on from custom delivery stuff, back in the Crystarium is this pixie at the Skywatcher. 
Normally, Norvrent Skywatchers can only see Norvrent locations, but thanks to this pixie, we can see the entire game's weather from any Skywatcher. Also, since we're moving on to more traditional crafting stuff, uh, don't forget to level your retainers, like I did. I say this a lot, but a battle retainer is super key for making normal crafting much easier. That's especially true if you make yourself leave turn-ins at the Crystalline Mean. Lots of enemy drops needed, and leaves are still as amazing as ever for EXP. But we have another new option. Replacing class quests is the facets of the Crystalline Mean. There are five of them, and there is a finale quest for completing all five, so I highly recommend using them for leveling up. They are as follows. Culinarian and Alchemist together. Fishing because Special Snowflake. Armorsmith, Blacksmith, and Goldsmith because Metalwork. Carpenter, Leatherworker, and Weaver holding the rest of the crafters. And Botany and Mining bringing up the rear for the fifth facet. Again, do all five. It's a lot of very good EXP. The only problem is, the crafting goes back to the pre-Stormblood craft idea of needing normal materials for most of the crafting, but not all of them. The good news is, it's still not anywhere near as awful as Heavensward crafting was, so it'll go by quickly. You still want to make items high quality if possible. For a side-by-side -side comparison, here's the EXP amounts of no quality and high quality turn-ins. It's not quite the two times multiplier leaves have, but it's a significant boost to the rewards. But again, if you have the script gear I recommended, you have tons of leeway with crafting Zs. We'll get food rewards from these, and manuals to boost EXP when crafting a gathering, with more than double what the previous set of manuals were worth. Makes crafting stuff on them all the more worthwhile. As for the gathering ones, they're basically just normal items in the world now, and are even in the gathering log. You can even use the item search feature to find them in the log. Fishing, you're still out of luck like always. Read the text you are given from the NPCs, or use online guides. I will not be going through the entire facet line here, as by now, you should know how this all works. But like crafting, Get high quality ones where you can for bigger and better rewards, and more scripts. We're done in the Crystarium for now, so let's head back to the Beast Tribe unlocks. First, crafting has the Dwarves with the unlock in right. If you haven't done them yet, the blue quest chain in right and the blue quest chain in Tomra are both required for Ron to the rescue, which then opens up this quest to be taken. Again, if you have the level 70 script gear, super easy tribe to do. And it's in Lakeland for some reason. Well, it's because there's too many major events in Kalusha to fit them in there. We'll see why in the part 2 of Battle Stuff. Otherwise, same as all the Beast Tribes. It's a worthy thing to invest in and is really good EXP for your crafters to get to level 80. Back in the Raktiko Greatwood is the Katari Tribe. To get this, you had to do the entire blue quest line of both Slitherbow and Fanau, as we went over in the main video. Katari quests will add blue exclamation marks onto the map for where you want to be searching for nodes, and are plenty easy in script gear. Again, I can only say that so many times. These tribes are easy and worth tons of EXP if you are prepared. The Katari also have a bit of an interesting twist. Every rank up you do will have a choice. I don't think overall it has any real impact on the tribe story, but you will slightly change things and have a different overall experience than anyone else. Now let's start talking about level cap features. We have all the resources we need to get there, so let's get going at cap. You're going to want gear for all of it first, and we'll talk about gear curve later, but first let's actually talk about the features. 
The first one being the return of crafting and gathering relics. You will be given one for free, but otherwise more of them will cost 80,000 gil to start the relics chain. Crafted stuff requires specific sky builder materials from the diadem and items bought with scripts, while the gathering ones just involve going gathering. There's multiple steps like a normal relic, but they're basically all normal crafting, if a little difficult. Except for the final step, which is expert recipes. Expert recipes are far more difficult than any other recipes in the game. They require a lot more progress, a lot more quality, and have their own sets of special conditions that occur mid-craft. You can see my gear on my main. I have the relics, which technically aren't better than the pentamelded crafted gear, and basically, I'm the absolute best gear I can get otherwise. And the expert crafts still require a lot of effort. 30 to 60 steps depending on the expert recipe in specific we're talking about. Now, I'm not trying to complete this craft I'm showing you, just showing how deep the requirements are, and crafting these experts take a lot of effort. I screwed up this attempt even, but that's besides the point. I'm not using food, I'm not using special crafting potions. There's entire guides out there for just this specific feature of crafting. For an analogy, this is the savage of crafting. So this is well beyond basic crafting, but if you're willing to learn it, it is quite learnable. Now I showed a preview of what current endgame gear looks like on my main, so let's talk about progression at level cap. If you stay on into Endwalker, and art coming in at the end, like with Shadowbringers currently being at the end, you'll be spending the entire expansion upgrading a couple times. You can currently skip to the pretty expensive Aesthetes gear, I don't know how to say that, for zero effort, but a hefty gill cost, especially considering this endgame gear is only the best gear if you pentameld it which means lots of high-level materia, which means a lot more cost beyond the items themselves. Of course, there's also white scripts. White scripts being the same as yellow, but for level cap. The problem here is there's a lot of items we need to buy with both gathering and crafting white scripts for recipes. Further, there were three tiers of white script gear, which are harder to come across than Yano because of being level cap scripts. They may add a new script type in Endwalker, but that aside, when Shadowbringers first came out, every individual crafter had a separate gear set. The artifact armor of each class, which was so, so, so expensive on white scripts and inventory, rather than the pentamelded gear at level 80, that all of them could use at once. It's only now that the expansion is over that we can skip to the third and final white script set that all of them can use. This gear isn't much less effective than pentamelded sets, and the level 70 gear I told you to get in Stormblood had a level 70 crafted set that pentamelded would be stronger. But if you want to go hard into endgame crafting, the investment is worth it. Get the crafted stuff, not the script gear. Don't forget, we also have to buy master recipe books. Endwalker will eventually add a book 9 and 10, but not both at launch. We don't even have all the recipes in the books the moment the book comes out. Future patches add more recipes to the book. Gatherers also have books to buy. At this moment in Shadowbringers, they cost 4,000 yellow scripts. This might get reduced by a lot once Endwalker comes out, but you need to buy 40 of these tokens for 100 scripts each, then trade these to the vendor here. Expect something similar on launch day of Endwalker, and these items are all absolutely critical 
for master book crafting, and potentially even some recipes that aren't master book. But okay, let's talk about the full gear curve. Keep in mind, you can craft gatherer versions of all this gear as well. So, day one, Endwalker releases. There will be a level 90 set you can pentameld. In the case of Shadowbringers, the Dwarven Cotton set plus Lignum Vitae and other such tools. The White Script Crafter Artifact sets are the cheap player versions of these, technically. After a patch, we will have Master Books populate with the second tier of gear, and White Scripts will also have their second tier of gear eventually released as well. Provided you are in either of the first sets of gear, you can reliably create the second set. In this case, Facet Gear for Shadowbringers. Then finally, the third tier will be eventually released. And the crafted third tier is relatively easily created using the previous tier. Keep in mind, all of these will involve special items you can only make using items from the Gathering Books, and even items you can only buy with Tome Stones. So even battle jobs get in on the high-end crafting recipes and gear progression. For example, this Tempest Adhesive from Mobile Lumber, this adhesive is something you might buy with Tome Stones. Current expansion Tome Stones, not good old poetics. We'll be talking a lot about current x back Tome Stones next episode. And then beyond this is still one final tier of tools, resplendent tools as of Shadowbringers. Back in Yulmore is this specific vendor. You need 60 of a specific regent to trade in for a single tool, which are gold looking to show off how awesome you are for making them. To get those, you need to go through three different tiers of expert crafts, each harder than the last. You need to take base materials to turn them into a component, two of those components to attempt to create a second component, and two of those second components to attempt to create the final component. 60 of those final components is one resplendent tool. I consider this crafting ultimate. As I hear from people who actually did make themselves resplendent tools, each craft individually takes over five minutes on average. And now comes what you do now that you are level cap, you're geared up, and you're done with the progression. Start selling the stuff you're wearing. You made yourself this expensive gear, melted it yourself. A lot of people aren't going to make it for themselves. They're going to buy it straight off the market board. Or they'll be doing raiding. Anytime a new raid tier comes out, there's brand new gear to go along with it. Start crafting that and you can make a lot of money. So you have crafter and gather gear, battle gear, and other stuff. You could do the lower tiers of gear too, like the base 80 sets of gear, and not just the current gear. You could also do stuff within the leveling curve, stuff from level 1 all the way up to 79. You can craft class quest turn-ins, now that you're level 80 and overpowered in the stat department, you could basically one action to get a completed class quest item so long as you went and gathered all the materials. Making them for you is way easier than some level 60 having to make the item for the level 60 class quest. You can make a lot of money off of selling those. There's also the special primal weapons that get special glowy versions as patches go on. Primal Bardings, Primal Furniture, and Furniture in general. Furniture sells for a lot, especially when new housing comes out, like when Ishgard releases in Endwalker. You're going to be able to make a lot of bank off of that if you are ready for the competition, because a lot of people are going to be trying to get in on that. Some items are easier to make than others, but the harder to make items might be worth the investment because they're big money, and something not a lot of people will try to do. There's a lot of options of what you can make. You have an entire crafting log there. Potentially you could even make tons of money from doing craft log completion. Some items aren't worth it, 
especially the Eureka hat. That one is awful. But in general, you can make a lot of money just from challenging yourself to do the entire crafting log. You could also start spamming leaves on your crafters, like the famous coffee biscuit leave. People are making millions from farming coffee biscuits. I myself just farmed purple carrot juice because it's easy to make, but still it just goes to show all the different options you have. It's time that you can actually start investing on purely making money and not leveling and making money. And then that that's it. Prepare yourselves, because the next time there's progress to do, we'll be an Endwalker. And you'll be joining us on the treadmill of level cap progress. Thank you for watching the final episode of Gathering and Crafting for your first day. I doubt anything major will come with Endwalker that isn't already really covered in this series. Do blue quests, do all quests, eventually you'll run out of things and be caught up and reading patch notes for where to go next. But we have one more episode before Endwalker comes out. See you next time, and may the power of Anna did Hogsley waste to your enemies. And special thanks to all my patrons as usual. And the extra extra special thanks to... Ayudeva, Eamon al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Kyle Steinhauser, Lise, Yaufi, Mizella, Scott Stanley, Vala LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. Thank you all for your support. Thank you all for watching me this far. And I'll see you next time.